City. Where are my baseball players? <laughs> oh, okay. in the lounge. Okay. <clears throat> what a time to be alive. Man, NFL Draft Week. We've got UCR baseball in the house and a lot of other cool little notes that we're going to pass along that you won't get anywhere else, but right here on the Inland Sports Show, Fox Sports Radio, 1350 AM. I am Pep Fernandez, joined by David Zink from the Press Enterprise. we got Gazal Hassan in the house, Woo-hoo! the voice as of Bruce, the Highlanders. As Bruce Springsteen would say, is there anybody alive out there tonight? <laughs> <laughs> and of course, it's not a show until intern Ja Rule rolls in, who is... Not only is he intern Ja Rule, but Javier is also the NFL Draft Update anchor this morning. So if we have any other local players from the inland area drafted today during the NFL Draft while we're on the air, intern Ja Rule's going to break it down for you. And he's got the Green Bay Packer hat on, which is very, which is very uh, appropriate. apropos. Yes, yeah. yes, Buy absolutely. Buying the colors. Hey, so we got a lot to get to. We're going to kick everything off with the NFL Draft. It's all brought to you by... Adrenaline Athletic Training in Corona. AdrenalineAthletic.com is the website. Check out their travel ball teams and different training programs. They're real hot on social media right now. If you look on there, there are a lot of pictures and videos of what actually goes down there with Leonard Russell and his team. So check them out. Adrenaline Athletic Training. It's spoiled, quick, quality oil change. I was there this week. Bill says, Pep, need to get out to CBU a little bit more. Their baseball team's tearing it up. I said, Bill, I got you. We're going to get out there. We've got to give the Lancers some love. So he's a, he's a big fan of local sports, and his sons, obviously, uh, are Lancers. And uh, Remax Advantage, nobody sells more real estate. Nobody. 909-307-5665 is the number. If you're looking to list a home, find your dream home, they can hook it up. All right, before we get to the NFL draft, just a quick little pat on the back to us. Actually, it's more for Noah Valencia from the California School for the Deaf. So we had the Inland Sports All-Star Classic, El Clasico, at Norta Vista High School. Noah Valencia, one of the All-Stars in the game, he dropped 35 points and earned MVP honors. And yesterday, Jeff Gorm, the head basketball coach at Norta Vista, called me up and said, Pep, you've got to take a look at this week's Sports Illustrated because who is in Sports Illustrated but none other than Noah Valencia for dropping 35 points, the MVP of the Inland Sports All-Star Classic. See, when you say worldwide, now we, in many ways, we are worldwide. I guess so. It's our first mention in Sports Illustrated, thanks to Noah Valencia, who had a, a, a crazy game. Credit code goes to Noah, but, you know, yes. coattails we can hang yeah, on Yeah, we'll hang on his coattails for as long as we can. They're going to start a satellite publication. Inland Sports Illustrated. Whoa! I like that. <laughs> oh, man. I like that. That's the best seller right there. Let's make it happen. We could do that. <laughs> Bill Navigato, get Bill Navigato on the horn. <laughs> spoiled. Tile, the spoiled Inland Sports Illustrated. There you go. We'll make it happen. But, hey, but congrats, seriously, congratulations to Noah Valencia from the California School for the Deaf, our Inland Sports MVP in Sports Illustrated. It's the one with Craig Sager on the cover. So if you're a fan, you want to go check it out, you can go find that. Uh, and it's a great piece on Craig Sager. That, that's right, right as well. So... Anyways, that's pretty cool. So we just want to give that a quick mention. All right, to the NFL draft, that's what everyone's talking about. The NFL season never really dies. We break out the paddles. We keep this thing alive all year round, 12 months out of the year, because everyone loves the NFL and football. And Kenny Clark, first-round draft pick to the Green Bay Packers, number 27 overall, the first inland area player to go in the first round since, do you guys know? Greg, Greg, do you know? You're flying the colors, brother. You got the Colton Yellow Jackets on. Sharice, right? Jimmy Smith. Oh, Jimmy 2011 Smith. 2011 to the Baltimore Ravens, also number 27 overall. So, big day for Kenny Clark. A couple things I want to point out from his draft party. One is Keyshawn Johnson was there. He's part of the agency that represents Kenny Clark. And I went up to Keyshawn I'm like, Keyshawn, he, he let a Trojan in the room? I know. Isn't that kind of weird? Crossing the line there. USC, Strange UCLA. bedfellows. So anyways, uh, I go up to Keyshawn Johnson and said, hey, uh, can I get a quick interview about Kenny getting drafted by the Green Bay Packers? He's like, oh, you don't want to talk to me. And I said, seriously, I said, Keyshawn, we all know you like to talk. It's, it's okay. <laughs> and he told me, don't believe the hype. <laughs> and that's how it ended. He wasn't the, the, the primary agent for Kenny Clark, but he's part of the agency that represents Kenny Clark. You know, like when a guy goes fishing? <laughs> yeah. Keyshawn Johnson's a really shiny lure. Yeah, I know, I know. Like, hey, everyone knows him. He's got the name. He's got the face. He likes to talk. Can I, can I introduce you to Keyshawn Johnson? Yes. 
So it didn't happen, but I did try. Uh, the other thing I want to point out uh, from NFL Draft Party for Kenny Clark is... So ESPN was set up right next to me, and there was a 20-second delay between what they were hearing directly from the ESPN studio and what was being broadcasted. So the guy said, there's 20 seconds. If I nudge you, it's go time. To make sure you don't miss the shot. It's go time. So Alex Pierce, Carter head football coach, walks up to me and says, you know what's kind of weird? You know, it's like we're in, like in the mid-20s at this point. He's like, the only team that reached out to me was the Green Bay Packers. He's like, they're coming up at 27. I wonder if they really like Kenny that much. I mean, they actually reached out to me. They had me like write out this form and all this stuff about Kenny Clark. I, said, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you're right. Sure enough, number 27 call, comes up, Green Bay Packers, and Alex Pierce nailed it. NFL insider Alex Pierce. And I said, what did you say, coach? And he's like, well, I remember telling Green Bay that if I had a son, I would want him to be Kenny Clark. Like, that's the kind of guy off the field that Kenny Clark is. So he had to fill out this form. He's like, but that was the only team that reached out to Carter High School and Alex Pierce. Wow. Isn't that kind of cool? That is great. You won't get that anywhere else. Right here, I feel like it ends up with you guys now because, you know, you were at the draft party, and John L. Ramey, who's the voice of UCR basketball, he also does the UCLA coaches show. He had yes. Kenny Clark on. It was that inland, that entire oh, really? <laughs> inland connection going on here. You know, it's like six degrees of Kenny Clark. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's a huge name. Obviously, he's going to the NFL. Everyone wants a piece of Kenny First Clark. First round to pick. Go on the, yeah, I mean, that's, that's big time. Is that big? See, I only follow Canadian football. So, <laughs> okay, so, Arena, so. so Kenny Clark is like the apex, the pinnacle of yes. draft night. Yes. Do we want to talk about the, the, the low point of draft night on the first night? Not being drafted? Uh, no, no, uh, no, not even not being drafted. What about the kid who dropped the 12 spots? We will. We'll, the... we'll get to that. But we have All an right. interview with Kenny Clark. We want to oh, hear cool. from Kenny Clark. He talks about what it means to go to Green Bay, one of the most historic franchises in all of sports, going in the first round. <laughs> and he also got, there was a couple special moments. His dad, if you don't know his backstory, is incarcerated right now. They're still trying to get him out. His dad was able to watch the draft and also call Kenny a couple times, once before the draft started and once after he was drafted. And they were able to put it on speakerphone so everyone could hear his dad, you know, kind of say congratulations. A pretty special moment. But here's Kenny Clark just moments after being drafted, number 27 overall by the Green Bay Packers. It happened so fast. And, uh, I mean, just when I got the call, man, it's just... It's, it's, I, don't think, I don't think it still hasn't hit me yet that, I, I mean, I'm a Green Bay Packer. But, I mean, it's crazy, man. It's crazy, real crazy. It hasn't hit me yet. I had, I had a lot of confidence I was going in the first round. I mean, a lot of stuff did say I was going second round, but, I mean, that, that's the biggest reason why mock drafts don't really mean nothing. I mean, you saw a lot of stuff that, that went on in this whole draft process, and there's a lot of wows, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of ups and a lot of downs for a lot of people. So, uh, I think I think the biggest the biggest thing was not to believe None of, none of the stuff that anybody read or what anybody said. It's just all about how you competed and, and how you worked on the field. Oh, Kenny, you had a couple of phone calls from your father uh, throughout this draft yeah. party. How special was that that he could share in this celebration with you? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's special. It's always special. I mean, like, like I said, like I always say, my dad is a huge, process, I mean, a huge part of the process of anything that I do. So uh, just my dad being able to call me all the time throughout this whole process. Um, and, and I knew I knew he was. I knew he was going to get enough time to, to call me. He got a chance to watch it, actually, and hear my name get called. So, uh, I mean, that was just great. It was just great for me. To, great for me, and it was great for my dad to actually get a chance to, to be a part of this process and watch it on TV and be able to, to just talk to me on, on the day. Because, I mean, I just wanted to be with my friends and family. I wanted the kids to see it. I wanted everybody. I wanted everybody to see this, man. I wanted everybody to be inspired by it. And uh, I just wanted, I just wanted everybody to just see it and and just know that I mean people can do it. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you can really come out here out of the Atlanta Empire and you can do something. You know? I mean, it, it don't, it don't get no better than that. Playing in, in the Rose Bowl, one of the most historic stadium, stadiums ever, and then going and getting drafted to the Green Bay and playing in, at, at Lambeau to one of the most historic uh, stadiums ever. I mean, it's a little quarter, but I mean, I'm a football player. I, mean, I gotta play. I gotta play in, in, in whatever. I mean, whatever it is, you know what I'm saying. And, I mean, I'm ready for it. I mean, I'm happy. Uh, I'm ready to go, and, and that's the last thing that's on my on my mind is the weather or anything else. Uh, my expectations, man, is just to give my teammates everything that I got. 
and uh, show the coaches that that I, I, I will be a great player in their organization and um, just just to just do my job, earn their, earn their respect, and uh, just go out there and play hard. Kenny, when Green Bay was on the clock, did they call you? Did your phone blow up? And you looked down and you saw the number? Or how did that? Yeah, yeah. When what they, did you think when your phone was was buzzing? I mean, I, I was sitting there. And I'm like, I, I'm sitting there. I, I had a feeling I was gonna go somewhere in the in the in the top 20. I mean, not in the top 20, but in the 20 through 30, whatever. And uh. I mean, I was sitting there, I was trying to think, trying to think, and, like, who's going to call me and, and what's going on in the draft right now. And uh, when Green Bay called me, uh, it, was just, it was crazy. It was crazy. The Green Bay Packers in our exclusive interview with Inland Sports just moments after at his draft party. First off, I got to thank Kenny for allowing us to be there. I mean, there wasn't a whole lot of media there. Um, of course, I, I saddled up next to ESPN because – those guys were ruthless. Like they were like, you do not stand in front of the table. You do not block Kenny Clark. I mean, they were like jumping, like moving people, physically moving people. So I knew I was in a good spot because no one was going to get in front of my shot. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, ESPN. Yeah. So, uh, so it was cool. Uh, but yeah, it was a, a rough draft. We well, don't have to touch it along, but it was a rough, rough draft for uh, the, the old Miss kid, right? Yeah, and his name escapes me now. Uh, Laramie Tunsil. Tunsil, yeah. 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 I just felt. I, part of me felt bad for the kid because that's really getting blindsided by some. Well, that, it was not it was blackmail, good. right? You know the you know the story. Well, the I, stepfather I, yeah. and the whole thing. Uh, it's a really bizarre story. Well, but the, the 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 stepfather claims he didn't do it. Of course he does. Right. He doesn't want to go to prison. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Well, the, wait a minute. The, the, the he doesn't want a, He doesn't want a six foot five, three hundred and fifteen pound man rip him in four pieces. They've uh, already had a fight. I heard. They're already circulating rumors that. The, the the dolphins maybe orchestrated this whole thing. Yeah, to get, to get him dropped for them. Oh, Here's the funny gosh. thing is though, think about this though. If I'm an agent, and you get a kid who's drafted, you don't want him to go to a bad team. Why wouldn't you do that? You know, isn't that what happened to Dan Marino? But he in the lost draft? a lot of money, right? He did. He lost uh, I, millions. And then what was the whole? Would you, would you rather? Would you rather? Wouldn't you rather play in Miami than Baltimore? Straight cash, homie. I'll, All follow, right. I'll follow the money. Okay. I'm not. I'm not bashful. Straight, I'll be breaking bread wherever, right? <laughs> in whatever city. Um, one guy who did not get picked up in the first round but went in the second round. Sue yeah, our, uh, Cravens. Our good friend Sua Cravens going number 53 overall to the Washington Redskins. He was another guy like Kenny Clark that people were looking at maybe into the first round, early second round. Uh, so Sua goes in the second round to the Washington Redskins, number 53 overall. I don't know if... I don't think it scared teams away that they weren't sure, like, is he a linebacker? Is he a safety? Does he need to trim down? Does he need to bulk up? Because right now we're living in a, in a time in the NFL where guys like um, Cam Chancellor, like, they're hybrids. Like, man, you can put him back he's in the secondary. He's a talented dude. He's a USC guy. He'll play somewhere. They'll figure it he's out. He's good enough. He, he'll find a place on that Washington Redskins team. So uh, shout out to Sua Cravens, newest member of the Washington Redskins, uh, going in the second Round. Um, also, Javier's on his phone. Javier, any update? Anything going on? No? Okay, shaking his head no. A couple guys that we're keeping an eye on. Sebastian Tretola, offensive guard um, out of Arkansas and Cajon High School. Tyler Irvin, a running back from San Jose State and Colton High School, Greg. That's for you. Uh, Dominique Robertson, offensive tackle from West Georgia in Redlands East Valley. Dante Dion, he's a, a defensive back out of Boise State and Summit. I remember him on that Summit Championship yep. team. He was, he was a stud. Little guy, but he was a stud. And uh, DeMonte Casey was a guy who entered the NFL draft from San Diego State. He was the Mountain West Conference Defensive Player of the Year. And then he took his name out. So, I don't know, maybe this draft was heavy on DBs. I'm not sure what happened. Maybe his agent said, you know what, one more year with the Aztecs, then your, your stock will rise. But he, he was in, then he went out. And uh, one other mention, Cody Kessler, dear, dear friend of the program, goes to the Cleveland Browns in the third round. <laughs> Greg, why are you laughing? How dare you? When's the road trip to Cleveland? Yeah, the great, Let's do this. The graveyard of quarterbacks. It's like the curse, the Browns curse. Yeah. Listen, it's got to end at some point. All good things. Did was, anybody get all bad things must come to an did end? Did anybody too. get a look at him when it, when it was called? Did he go? Oh. I know. No, I don't. Yeah. I didn't see any pictures or anything his, like his that. His name has the same pentameter as Bernie Kosar. You know, oh. Bernie Kosar. Bernie Kosar. So you never know. See, that's a good reasoning. I, I was hoping you weren't going to say like, oh, he's and his like throwing motion is just as bad. Ooh. Oh, Zink, how dare you? He's a friend of the show. We want him back on the show. Oh, come on. I can't have any fun. Uh, he's, I think he'll do fine in Cleveland. And they're, they're in need of a savior. 
I hope so because he'll become the first USC quarterback to ever have any success. Hugh Jackson. Oh man. Hugh Jackson's head coach there. He's done well with USC quarterbacks. Yes, that's true. Booty skin. While while Zink is, continues to just throw USC under the bus. I, mean, I, sure I don't like USC, but I'm objective. I understand. Yes. Hugh Jackson's a very oh, I'm objective. Offensive mind. Not offensive, but offensive. You know what I mean? Yes. Whoa. Bad context. Somebody will clip that and put it on YouTube. I know. And then Hugh Jackson's going to come Did you hear what they me. said on the Inland Sports Show? I know. And best of best of luck to Cody Kessler with the Cleveland. I'm, I'm, look, I, we kid, okay? I know. Gosh. Hey, I'm so touchy. Hey, make fun of Miles Jack if you'd like. Click clack, click clack. Yeah, he, he dropped a little bit too. I feel bad for him. Yeah, I, I, mean, mean, I, I heard how many times high as number three to the San Diego Chargers. Colossal how mistake how by the NFL. Mike, mark my words. He may have a short career, Miles Jack. He will be dominant in the NFL. Oh yeah, I'm going on the, the record. Was it April thirtieth? I'm going on the record. Right here, you heard it. Both first. sides of the ball too. I think he's no, no. He's got to play I, defense. Defense. I'm defense. telling you right now. I'm, I, I'm telling you right now. He could play both sides of the he's ball. A Jimmy he's Johnson, the ball? prototype. Yeah. He Instead did of Toby Gerhardt, how dare you? Oh jeez. North Jacksonville. Talk about Norco Love out. from Pat. <laughs> got to represent. Hey, when we come back, we got the UC Riverside baseball team in the house. Uh, we're going to talk about the Highlanders. We're going to talk about tweets. We're going to talk about bow hunting. It's going to get real messy in here. Coming up on the Inland Sports Show, Fox Sports Radio, 1350 AM. We focus on the customer here. Believe it or not, that is the biggest thing for customers on an oil change. They just want to, the convenience of coming in, driving in, getting it done, and, and driving out. We just greet them, get them going, and they're done in about 10 minutes or so. any sales on them. We do the oil change uh, and I think that's that's what sets us apart is our, our customer service. Vacuumed and cleaned your windshield for you as well. Everything's looking pretty good. You come into us one time, believe me, we'll spoil you and you'll be ready to come back the next time. specific to what they need. A lot of people actually come in here for the performance training and also we have our travel ball program with our softball and baseball teams. Our performance training definitely to get quicker, stronger, faster. on the customer here. Believe it or not, that is the biggest thing for customers on an oil change. They just want to, the convenience of coming in, driving in, getting it done, and, and driving out. Just greet them, get them going, and they're done in about 10 minutes or so. We don't push any sales on them. We do the oil change, uh, and I think that's that's what sets us apart is our, our customer service. Vacuumed and cleaned your windshield for you as well. Everything's looking pretty good. Come into us one time, believe me, we'll spoil you and you'll be ready to come back the next time. And welcome back to the Inland Sports Show, Fox Sports Radio, 1350 AM. Plus, did I mention we're live and amplified around the world on the Inland Sports YouTube channel? 
We've got the UC Riverside baseball team in the house. You can watch us live around the world as long as you have the internet. You can check it out. We're all brought to you by Adrenaline Athletic Training, spoiled quick quality oil change, and Remax Advantage. Nobody sells more real estate than Remax. Um, one bit of breaking news I want to pass along. Valley College, the football team, has a new head coach. You're going to hear it here first. It's Jason Vandeveer. He was the offensive coordinator at L.A. Valley. He is the new head coach at San Bernardino Valley College. He uh, actually emailed me and said, Hey, Pep, I heard you're the guy for Inland Empire Sports. I just want to introduce myself. And I said, Well, that's not true, but I'm glad to meet you anyway. So we're going to get uh, head coach Jason Vandeveer uh, on the show sometime very soon. The next head coach at San Bernardino Valley College. But right now we're talking UC Riverside baseball. I'm just glad you guys are coming off a win last night. I didn't want you guys to come in here and be like, oh, we lost to Cal State North, which was a bummer. Ryan, uh, you closed the door. A little dicey at the end, right? But you guys uh, got the win 64 last night against yeah. the Matadors. At the end of the day, all, all that you care about is the W's on the board, and we're walking in the clubhouse happy. So um, any way we can get it done is, is always a plus. Now, why, Ryan, walk me through the mentality of a closer, because let's say you just give up a hit. Or maybe there's a couple guys on board, a run comes in. Do you do you grind even harder? Do you like focus in even more? Because you're like, oh man, I gotta I I gotta stop this right now. I gotta stop the bleeding. I mean, so like last night when your team's putting runs up on the board like that, it, it's a lot easier to come into a game and, and be able to work like you do. But when say it is a one run ball game, then the mentality does change a little bit. You're you're trying to make the best pitch, you're trying to get after these guys and, and not let one person get on base. But like I said last night, um, when when you guys got runs on the board and you come in with two runners on, it's not it's not the end of the world and, and it's always a plus knowing that your team is behind you putting up those runs so you don't have to stress as much. Um, but Rick Delgado last night, I, I felt bad for him, come in and give up his runs and that, that was the worst part of the night. I mean, we, we won. but Does he up. give you a hard time when you no, get back to the dugout? No, like, no, thanks, no. thanks, bro. <laughs> not at all. Rick, Rick is a great guy. He gave me a hug after. I was like, Rick, that's my bad, man, giving up your runs like that. He's like, don't worry about it. We won. I was like, all right, that, that's all good. Does uh, your head coach, Troy Percival, give you any advice, like, in those situations? I mean, it's, it's when things are going great, it's great, you know, three and out. But if, you know, you got guys on or you give a couple hits, does he tell you, you know, hey, just do this, you know, make your pitches, don't worry about who's on base. Like, what, is he, what kind of stuff does Troy tell yeah, you? Yeah, uh, when he gave me the ball last night with the, with the two runners on, he goes, he told me, look at the scoreboard. Drake over here told me, look at the scoreboard. He's, like, got a big smile on his face. He's like, we got a four-run lead. Let's go after these guys right here. Um, and then when first he made a mound visit, he said the same thing again. He goes, that guy on third doesn't matter, that guy on second doesn't matter, the guy on first matters. So do anything you can, let's get through this, come see me in a little bit. So it, it, he's very relaxed when he comes out in, in a pressure situation. That's Ryan Lilly, the, the pride of Vista Marietta High School. We also have the pride of Norco High School. I'm going to go to Drake Zarati <laughs> over here. Um, Drake, tell me, let's be honest, better bow hunter or better baseball player? Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if we're going based off this year, I'm going to go bow hunting for the last year. It's been a good year? <laughs> Has it been a good year for bow hunting? Yeah, the pigs have been running pretty good in Norco. <laughs> <laughs> That's a true statement. The pigs have been running pretty good in Norco this year. Um, during season, do you get a chance to go out and hunting? Is it a way to relax, or is it something like an off-season deal? Yeah, no, so I usually I usually uh, hunt and fish during season, kind of, and especially it's been a lot better this year. It's just... Gives you a chance to get your mind off things and get away from the baseball field on the off days and you know get to relax and stuff. Now you were a catcher, right? Yes. Just like Lily, what's with Percival like taking guys and just moving them around? So you're at second base now. Yeah. So I mean, it's kind of it, ever since my freshman year, even with Coach uh, Smith. I mean, he kind of moved me to third and first and put me in the outfield a little bit. So I mean, I've I've kind of been used to it as being just a utility guy. So it hasn't just been, want to be on the field. Hasn't been too much of a change. Yeah. It's just. Getting, getting away to be in the lineup every day. Turned a sweet double play yesterday. A sweet double play? Turned shuffle two. with the glove to Schultz, and Schultz, we had a great throw to first. Oh, shuffle with the glove, I love yeah, that. Yeah, I, I, to be honest, I don't know why I was getting the love for it. Schultz is the one that made that thing pretty good, so, yeah. He, That's a good teammate right there. Yeah. Give love to somebody else, right? Yeah. Uh, we also have Mark Contreras, the pride of Canyon Springs. Now, Mark, I remember you in high school. You had some really good teams at Canyon Springs. You had some good players yourself. Uh, we were talking. It was you were with McCarville, right? Right. The catcher and uh, Sodders, obviously yeah. on the mound. Um, now that you're playing for your hometown team here at, at UC Riverside, is that kind of special to to be able to play Division One baseball right here? 
Yeah, it feels good to uh, just uh, be close to home, be close to the family. Uh, I commute every day, so I get to go home, see my family after every game. Uh, I still try to get us, come out and see the guys as much as I can, uh, hang out with them. But, uh, yeah, it does feel good to be closer to home. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, you guys are flirting with the 500 mark overall, right? Like 19 and 20? Is that yeah, something right? Yeah, game away. Six and four in, in Big West Conference play. It, it's I mean, going to be 500 tonight. <laughs> You heard it right here. The, the pigs are running well in Norco, and they're going to win tonight. You heard it right here on the Inland Sports Show. Uh, so, Mark, I mean, from last year, I mean, it's like a total different season, right, compared to, you know, obviously it didn't go as, how, as well as you guys wanted to last year. Um, just looking at the record-wise, I mean, you guys are right there. I mean, is it too early to start thinking, you know, postseason, like if we put something together here? I mean, you know, just look at the record. I mean, how are you guys feeling right now? Um, we definitely – understand now that we're way better than we were last year. Um, midway through the season, we've already um, topped 15 games, so that that goes to prove that we're better than last year. And uh, I mean, Coach Schmidt, uh, he talked to us that um, the team that won their uh, the championship um, didn't get to 20 and 20 till their 40th game, and we have the chance to do that tonight. So, I mean, to think about that, I mean, that's reaching. We just want to take it one game at a time and get through tonight, and then we'll worry about tomorrow. All right, let's go down to Mark Espinoza. Tweets. Athletic trainer at UC Riverside, and I'm going to say this, Mark, the brains behind the UCR baseball tweets. It, I, it, can, is that safe to say? Are you, are you behind them? I mean, it is me, but when people say things like, the pig's running well in Norco, I mean, it writes itself. <laughs> <you know? laughs> can you use that in a tweet? Oh, that's probably that's probably that's gold, right? today. That's gold. <laughs> that's gold. That's perfect. <laughs> did you, true or false, did you write, French fries aren't French, Peanuts aren't nuts. The funny bone isn't a bone, and Walker doesn't walk. He rakes. He rakes. That's a that's a fact. <laughs> that was from nuts. last night. <laughs> that, I think that was Tuesday. Or Tuesday, yeah, yeah, earlier this week. But they're you know peg, uh, peanuts are legumes. You know they're not they're not nuts. Of course. They're like I mean, gosh, I mean, everybody knows do that. that. Right? Yeah. Uh, the funny bone's actually the ulnar nerve. I mean, there's all kinds of things. <laughs> Uh, I, I could just go through the Twitter feed. There's a couple, of tw you know, Twitter feeds that I don't miss. Yours is one of them. Even if I can't, you know, listen Gazal, you know, on the radio to the game, I'll go back and look at the tweets, and I can find out what happened and get a good laugh. Uh, do you spend a lot of time kind of formulating these? I mean, you're wrapping ankles and thinking, oh man, I'm gonna talk about those pigs tonight, in Norco. I mean, like, how does it come to you? You know, <laughs> it, it's really people ask me that a lot, and it's kind of. I tell people there's a lot of downtime just with your own brain when you're sitting around at baseball. I mean, these guys are getting... They're long games. Yeah, these guys are getting prepared. They're doing their BP. They're doing their, you know, their pregame. And, and I have a lot of time to just sit and, and think. And, and uh, that, that happens a lot, you know. And so it just kind of... I really don't have an explanation for it. <laughs> I wish I had a better, you know, more philosophical slant to it. And I probably could get into it, you know. I could go into... Uh, you know, you can go into, like, personality typings. If you guys do that Myers-Briggs personality typing, you know, I, I slant way towards the introverted side. And uh -huh. then, you know, you read books like Quiet, which are all about introverts, and they, they observe people and they, they see things more, you know, broadly. So Because as an athletic trainer, I mean, you're around these guys probably more than anybody else, right? Yeah, so I just, and, and it's funny to listen to them talk right now because they're very professional and they're very quiet. But Are they not? And, no. And, uh, and no. <laughs> you know, I, my office is in their locker room, and so the, I hear all manner of stuff in there. And, you know, and they're doing a great job in here, and, and uh, it, it's just interesting to see them there and, and how, they, how they interact with each other. And, 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 it, and it's great to have them here on the radio to see, see them, you know. Well, when it, when it comes to you, Mark, when you think of something good, I mean, do you... Use like the Notepad app on your phone. You write it down. You're like maybe you're in the supermarket. Maybe you're getting your car washed. You're like, oh man, that would be hilarious. I'm writing this down. There is that. There, there, there are apps. I have a Google app called Keep, and it does lists. And I have a ton of lists on it. And and that is one of them. Um, just every now and then, I'll notice something, and and I'll and I'll put it down. But the challenging part is 140 characters. You know, you wanna you wanna tell a whole story. Keep it nice and tight, and get it in there, <laughs> right, funny right. and witty. Oh, um, that's what. Let's, go ahead. That's what makes it so good. Is go ahead, talk nice and loud. It's only 140 characters. That you do it in, and yet you the pro, it's prose in 140 characters. It's hilarious, and you get everything in, and you are able to squeeze it in. I mean, do you sit in the dugout and grind over? Oh gosh, how am I going to get this one in 140? Yeah. You, you know what's interesting is that our new athletics director, uh, she kind of sits on the end, and I and I feel terrible being an employee working. <laughs> And being on my phone, so I try and hide in corners, and I try not to. <laughs> I, don't, I try not to make it obvious, so the coaches see me doing it. But everybody notices, and every now and then they'll come over. And it's like, hey, what are you tweeting about? You know. And, 
Is, is, is there a certain tweet that you put out there that had just like a, an overwhelming response? Like, man, I, I can't believe everyone thought it was so funny. Like, is there one that just stands out to you? You know, the, the original one that people seemed to, to latch on to was, was also about Thomas Walker. And I said, here is a list of famous walkers. You know, it was <laughs> Texas Ranger, uh, <laughs> Luke Sky. And, and Thomas, you know, so <laughs> oh, okay, that, was, that was a couple years ago. Oh, man, that's a gym. That's an oldie but a goodie. We're talking to the UC Riverside baseball team here, <clears throat> excuse me, on the Inland Sports Show, Fox Sports Radio, 1350 AM, plus live and amplified around the world on the Inland Sports YouTube channel. We'll get back to the tweets. Let's talk a little more baseball, just a little bit, you know, keep it professional, because these guys are professional on the air, right? Like you said. <laughs> of course. Maybe we'll, we'll talk to Mark off the air and get some really juicy stories about these guys, right? <laughs> Uh, but, guys, so like we said, Drake already promised it. You'll get the 500 tonight. Uh, do you feel like as the season's gone on, the team's kind of getting better? Like, you know, you're, you keep gradually getting better uh, from, from where you started. And obviously, something about the first game in Big West Conference Series, you guys, uh, maybe it's with Sodders on the hill, but uh, you guys also, you know, right out of the gate when these uh, Conference Series doing really well. What do you think it is, Ryan? Well, you know, I mean, when, this year we've been beating a bunch of top teams that last year we probably would have had no chance of beating and just walking away from those big games that we win is a whole lot of confidence and I really feel like our Tuesday games mean a lot when we play USD who comes in our yard and kicks us around we go down there to kick us around San Diego State usually has a winning record against us and on those Tuesdays when we beat those teams we have all this confidence going into the weekend and knowing from the past weekend like say we we win the series against Long Beach State you know, that, that Drake said that hasn't happened in his time here. Um, so that, that's just a whole boost of confidence for every single person on the team. Um, so it's just it's a momentum thing, the, the having a good week of practice, having a good week of weights, and, and just continuing the momentum and the um, attitude of wanting to get after it is just in every single kid, and that, that's the best part. I think that's why we're having such good success this year. Well, hitting the books, too. I mean, is it hard to... You know, like you said, maybe you have a Tuesday game in San Diego, then a, a three-game, you know, four-game series over the weekend. I mean, how do you how do you weave school in and out of that baseball schedule? Uh, I'm not the right guy to talk to. How are you great? I mean, you're obviously you're eligible. <laughs> oh yeah, I had the best quarter I've had last last quarter here at Riverside, so that's a plus. But no, I'm I'm, I'm joking. Uh, our Mark looks like a smart guy. <laughs> oh, this guy just got honor roll this week. <laughs> Told you. See, I picked him out of the group, right? <laughs> so, Nothing against you, Drake. I know you bow hunt, so I, was, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about Drake. Yeah, but our athletic, our, our athletic academic advisor, we have meetings every single week. Uh, she schedules it around our schedule. Uh, classes can't be later than 2 o'clock because we have practice at 2.30 every day, and games and all this kind of stuff. And I personally have eight hours of study all week. So whether you believe it or not, we're on the road or whatever, I'll be in the morning, 8.30 every day for two hours, have study hall. And if we're on the road, uh, Coach LeBlanc will have us uh, have study hall Friday, Saturday, depending on what time we play. So there's always a way to get it done, and it's just up to you if you want to get it done or not. All right, let's talk to our honor roll guy, Mark, uh, <laughs> with the good grades. What do you study, Mark? I'm just curious. What's I'm your a, major? I'm a business major, management. Business management. Yeah. Right. Unless you go pro. Uh, and is that a possibility? Is that something maybe you want to do? Yeah, that's a dream of mine, but I don't, I don't really look forward to it. I mean, I look forward to that, but I don't like look look to it right now. Yeah. I'm just taking it day at a time, game at a time, a year at a time. And it's my junior year, but like, you know, I'm just, you got time. I'm just trying to play. I'm you got time. Play, yeah. Do you guys feel like when you go up against teams that they're still judging you on what last year's record looked like and how you guys did, and you're going in there like, no, 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 last year's is totally different. Do you feel like that? Yeah, I, I really do feel that. I think they, like, loggly gag it a little bit, like, oh, we beat them last year, we smoked them last year, we swept them last year, and then after the first inning, you can see, like, their little cheers, their little confidence is all fake because once we put it to them, they're just, they... Uh, they Highlanders are back. back. They're like, they're like uh, what, what do we do? What do we do? And we're just going to keep playing, like... Um, like it was fun last last Tuesday and then the following Tuesday we went to San Diego, and um, like they they always beat us. But after the first inning, uh, you could see uh, you could see Rich Hill was just like, uh, what, what am I gonna do with this team? Uh, so that's just confidence for us to go out there and uh, we won the series against them. So just goes to, big. goes to prove that you know we're here we're here this year. We're not we're not just gonna roll over. Do you feel like that, Zerati, that you guys maybe have a little chip on your shoulder? The yeah. program. Oh yeah, definitely. It, I mean, it's been. I mean, I've been here for five years, and I mean, every year it's. You know, you go through the grind of everything, and you come up uh, a couple games short, or you end up having a bad record, and it's. I mean, teams start to look at you a little bit differently. You know, 
you know, they start to think that you're the ball club that's just going to roll over and, and, and lose a couple ball games here and there. And, and this year is, you know, completely different. You know, we've, we've found our identity. Guys are starting to play play really good baseball. Um, and as a ball club, I mean, I, I haven't been with a better group of guys um, that, that's really got a chance to, to go to a postseason and win some ball games. Any of these guys bow hunt with you? Take them out? No, you know what's funny is a lot of these guys, like, they always ask me. <laughs> they always ask, like, there's, there's a good group of guys that are like, oh, I want to go with you. Or like, if I get my hunting license, can I go with you? And it's like, I, I tell them all the time, like, yeah, I'll take you with me. You know, but those pigs are running but, in Orco. But, but, <laughs> it's, it. but it's but it's funny. It's, <laughs> it, as soon as you get into that ground blind or you get into that tree stand, you start seeing pigs running towards you. <laughs> the attitude's changed a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't I don't know if these guys are actually ready for it. Oh, that's great. Uh, so real quick, quick Pep Fernandez bio. So I grew up in a small town, like two thousand people. I worked on a dairy milking cows. True story. So we're real redneck. I grew up listening to country music. I know it probably doesn't look like it, but I worked on a dairy, <laughs> listening to country music. So I saw a the most redneck cities in the, in California list, and I thought my city's got to be up there. I think we were number four. Mm -hmm. Number one in California was Norco. <laughs> so how old were you when you started hunting? Like, were you just like, as soon as you could, you to, know, start it, you did it? No, to be honest, actually, my whole like growing up, like all I did was fish, and then it wasn't until probably my last year of high school where I really got into hunting. Um, but my whole life, like I was riding horses. My dad fought bulls. Like he rodeoed his whole life. So, oh like that's what that's what I would like. Did you want to be that? Like to, to, to be honest, it wasn't until my junior year of high school where I actually was like, oh, baseball's getting serious. I need to stop. My whole life, I grew up. I was roping and, and riding horses. So I you, want, you wanted to rodeo, maybe? Yeah, I was. Yeah. That was what I was looking more towards. And then I got to my junior year, and I was like, oh. I should probably start focusing on baseball. Maybe a little safer too, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, what, I'm just curious. What would you do in rodeo? Uh, so, when I was younger, I, I wanted to fight bulls just like my dad. That's all I wanted to do. Was he a barrel man or what? Was no, no, no. He actually fought bulls. He was out there saving all the bull riders. Yeah. Oh my gosh! But it wasn't until I was a little bit older I started noticing. I was like, ah, I don't think that one's going to work. I mean, my dad is. I mean, he's crazy for doing that stuff. <laughs> And, you know, you start to watch. Those guys are just completely different animals. So I started roping, and I, I enjoyed that way more. It was just a lot easier. And so you'd rather have pigs coming at you than a big, you know, oh, a, yeah. a, a, you yeah. know, a 700, <laughs> you know, whatever pound bull who's uh, who's coming right at you. Yeah, yeah, I'll take the 250-pound pig. I don't <laughs> want the 1,100-pound bull, yeah. What's the biggest pig you've gotten? Uh, about 350, 400. Whoa. They're yeah. big in Norco, man. Was that Norco? Oh, yeah, that was in Norco. That was in Norco. Yeah. <laughs> and the ripper bottom. You gotta take zinc, Drake. You yeah. Take, oh my uh, gosh. I'll stand up in a tree stand. Yeah, no, I'm not gonna was, fire at anything. Yeah, no, there was <laughs> actually, I think there was the last, last biggest pig recorded in Norco was like 850. No way. Taking out of that river bottom. Yeah, and this thing was about seven feet long. This thing was ginormous. Jeez. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. They're out there, Zinc. You could, it could be you. Well, they used to come up. Didn't they used to go up to the the, the cemetery in the back of Norco? They yeah, go there, root up the and, grass. Yeah, and, and they're actually they're actually starting to run into Van Buren on Riverside. Dang, they're starting to run into Van Buren, and they're starting to like the backside on uh, like Harup and all that. They're starting to run all over in there. That's yeah. serious. You taking notes? Yeah. yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Blends on being your backyard. <laughs> <laughs> I live right by the river bottom. Hey, Brian, I want to ask Mark Espinosa because we're running out of time here. So. What are you working on for tonight? I'm just curious. Is there anything like on deck, maybe in the hole that you're you're like you know no, what? I really, I really have no idea. Really? I, I every day is like a blank slate. I, I really don't know. So you go in there with you know. Yeah, I'm he's just got a job. I'm, I'm, he's, he's got. got a, he's he's actually got. There's like 35 of these guys. That come, hey, I need this. You know. Can you formulate maybe a couple tweets based on what was said in this show? Oh, for sure. If I okay. th I'll think about it later, but... So if I follow on Twitter tonight, I could see something like, oh, yep, I remember that from the show. Yeah, and sometimes, you know, s specific people, I'll send, like, secret messages to them. Like, you know, I work with soccer also, and they'll be like, hey, can you send a tweet for me? And I'll put, like, their initials throughout the message, and no one else sees it, <laughs> you know? And then they'll, tr they'll, they'll text me later, hey, I saw my name, you know? <laughs> Man, you gotta be, like, a decoder, like, what is he saying? Yeah, yeah, you would what's never the message know. In that? <laughs> there is one specifically I did that people noticed, but... You're like, every third letter, you're gonna count that one, it's gonna create a secret message inside there. <laughs> he runs Dark Ops for the athletic program. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Redlands High right here. Oh, Redlands High, it's true. Pride of the Terriers. Pride of the Terriers. That's right. Me and well. Angel. What's Land that? Land of Zuri. Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah, he is. He's a Terrier as well. Guys, thank you for coming in.
Man, I, I feel like that was just a cornucopia of information. I'm just blown away right now with everything we just talked. Did we talk baseball? I think we talked baseball, right? We did? All right. Ryan Lilly, Mark Contreras, Drake Zorati, and, of course, Mark Espinosa, the guy behind the tweets, also the athletic trainer for the UC Riverside baseball team. Those big squealing. You guys can't hear it, but he keeps playing the big squealing. <laughs> on the air. We appreciate the time, guys. Best of luck tonight against Cal State Northridge. You can Thank listen you. to Gazal. Gazal, what time do you go live? We're actually we're going 550. We're not on 14. We're on 1440 tomorrow. Okay. Today is just GoHighlanders.com. GoHighlanders.com tonight, 550, and then also tomorrow, uh, 1440. Um, you can check out the Highlanders. When we come back, we've got more of the Inland Sports Show, Fox Sports Radio, 1350 AM. Mr. Maxwell, come on. Have, have John Maxwell in there. I don't need to be in there. No, you don't? Okay. No, I need to get my hair cut. Okay. John, thank you for help. Thank you, guys. Stand back. We'll talk down the I'll road. give you the one you don't have to hold. We'll see you tonight, Gazelle. Thanks, Pat. Thanks. See, so you know, see you, John. We'll stay watch. It's like this. The pigs are running. Great interview. Oh, they're running, yeah. man. We had a great interview there. <laughs> that, that was awesome with, with Espinoza. We were joking with Zink. We were joking. That's the Wizard of Oz, the man behind the curtain. Now, listen. Cause he, cause, well, all right, let me ask both you guys. When I told you I'm bringing the guy who does the uh, UCR tweets, which one of you thought that he, that, that guy was the last in? guy I expected no. to be the guy writing tweets? There you go. You know, usually when you say athletic training, you think of it. I mean, he's, a, he's an in-shape guy. He's just yeah. not your... Prototypical like athletic six, trainer, one, one run, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I run marathons on the weekends, kind of guy. But um, but he the the, the, mo the thing I'm going to tell you is do not have him in a room that you are saying things you don't want other he'll people to know. Because that's he'll, ammunition. He'll really. take it all in, and then at some point, two weeks down the road, he's tweeting. He's like, oh, I'm in, in that. sports journalism prep 101. Ja Rule is here. He wants to get into the business. Yes. If you want to be in the broadcasting business <laughs> and you work for a school. Make friends with the athletic trainer. Yeah. They know everything. everything. Yeah. 99% of it you can't use on the air, but the 1% you can is gold, Jerry. Gold, Pat. <laughs> gold, David. And you know it was Bam. gold. You know it was gold yeah. when he was talking about, yeah, I'm just really surprised standing here listening to these guys talk. They're really professional. 
Now, that's not what I see every day. I have an office inside of their <laughs> locker room, and I'm sure there's a lot he can that's give That's their us. safe sp space, you know? They can say whatever they want, right. act however they want around their guys. That's like a big family. But, yeah, they, they were very good. All of them were great in here. Boy, and that was... That was Action packed. Oh, the tweets are so great. I can't wait to see what he I'm gonna be following along on my phone on the on the tweets. I mean listening to Gazal, of course. Did you hear the did you hear the layers though? He's actually putting initials in there so that the girls the women's soccer team can say, Oh, he shouted out to us and inside like you would it's never hidden. notice it. And I think we spent probably what forty five minutes after one of the last shows just sitting in here laughing at every one of the yeah, we're tweets. We just kept the reading them <laughs> and laughing because they're just they're they're dripping with sarcasm and I, I, I intrigue. Have the, I have the advantage of when now I haven't done it recently, but the first couple of years I was with the team, I'd go on the road with them occasionally. We went to like Arizona State, we went to Santa Barbara, uh, Cal Poly, and I would room with Mark. And Mark just the guy who walked in, that's who he is. But he's real smart. He's real witty. And what's interesting is the stories I got from other people. So Tony Ontiveros is the he's the head athletic trainer at uh, UCR. So he kind of coordinates everything. So when they bring new people in, Mark has been there long enough now where he'll be part of the interview. And it's interesting because he'll ask those type of things you see on Twitter uh -huh. to potential athletic trainee hirees at UCR. So you gotta, I, I gotta find it. I'll find out. I'll, I'll, we'll talk. I'll talk to him in the, in the in the dugout today, and I'll I'll tweet you guys some of the questions he's asked potential people. He doesn't ask anything about the job and the qualifications. No, of course not, right? He just wants to see where your mind is at. You know. <laughs> so like, and you need somebody like that. Like who won the bet in Seinfeld? But he'll ask that question. No, 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 no. no. It'll be like something esoteric, like the oh, whole really? thing about like peanuts and yeah. legumes and all that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Of course they're not nuts. I mean, we all know that. They're right? legumes. Come on. <laughs> yeah. And the best, the, the AD. The AD sits right next to him, so he's like, I gotta kinda hide it. I don't want her to think I'm getting paid on the job for just sitting here tweeting. <laughs> so, he's creeping in a corner, he's like this. Oh, it's hilarious. Hey guys, uh, we've gotta get to Ja Rule's uh, quiz. Every every show at the end of the show we give him a quiz to see what he learned about in the show. So I've got two good questions. Uh, if you guys can think of another one or two. Well, I'm going to stand in for my man. So you, okay, so you're Thank good. You Zeke, you think of one more, okay? As I do. Well, no, he's got to answer the question, but I'm going to help him. You're the lifeline. You're right. going to help him? Of course. He's going to take it home. Look, it, I'm not Look. buying him dinner if he gets help from, because it's, it's like he's, he's trying to get in on a free dinner. No, no, no. I'm not going to give him the answer, but I'm going to bring, I'm going to I'm gonna do like, you ever see the old Prompt show, him. the $64,000 pyramid, yes, yes. when the celebrity would help the guy? Yeah, yeah. A hint, a that's, clue. That's so you say the do. word longer, you go, and. <laughs> go on YouTube, go on YouTube, type in Jamie Farr. And sixty four thousand dollar pyramid or whatever it is, it is he is his he's the best yeah. he's the best celebrity assister on that show. <laughs> now I'm gonna go do that. Then you just wasted my Saturday <laughs> afternoon. Great Jamie Farr, Corporal, Corporal Klinger from MASH. A uh, couple things before we get to the quiz. So the Ken Hubs Award is coming up on May 9th at Colton High School. Uh, proud to say that Inland Sports has been asked to be part of the Ken Hubs Awards and will be there. We're gonna be uh, Streaming it. I don't know if we're going to do it live, but we're actually going to produce a nice video for them. Um, it's a very special honor for the, the kids who are there and their families. So what it is, it's the top high school athlete in San Bernardino County. There's a boys and a girls representative from each school, and then they pick an overall winner, a boys and a girls. So Inland Sports, happy to be a part of that. Also, the following Monday, May 16th, is the Riverside Sport Hall of Fame, and that's quickly approaching us. Um, here's the list that's going to be inducted on that night, Monday, May 16th. Um, Dusty Baker, Leon Parma from football, David Ashley. You know David Ashley, right? Zinc, you're the motorsports guy. Adam Kennedy, former Major League Baseball North star. North High School. That's right, JW North. Uh, Joanna Hayes for track. Sue Gozanski, former UCR uh, volleyball coach. And Henry Coyle, who uh, is going in as a contributor. So those that's the class of 2016 for the Riverside Sport Hall of Fame. RiversideSportHallOfFame.com is the information. Go, please buy tickets. Support this. Um, it's going to be a great night. It, the Riverside Sport Hall of Fame is back on track. So it kind of went off the rails for about a year, but it's back on track. Um, I'm part of the executive board. I know I can't believe it either, uh, but I am, and uh, we're really excited about it. It's coming up May 16th, um, the Riverside Sport Hall of Fame Class of 2016. Once again, get tickets and uh, sponsor at RiversideSportHallOfFame.com. Uh, you know what? Another thing I've got to mention. At CBU today, we got the Riverside Classic, and that's going to lead us into Jaw Rule. Jaw, please get off your phone. Come on. I'm going to write a bad report to your professor if you don't get off your phone. Unless you're, check unless you're checking the NFL draft. What's I'm doing? Uh, the Riverside Classic is back. It's going on at Cal Baptist today. 
We've got Centennial against Ramona in high school baseball at 3, followed by King against JW North at 6. And intern Ja Rule will be out there representing Inland Sports, shooting great video highlights. Ja, we appreciate it. I know you're going to do a good job. They're going to love you out there. And uh, we need the lights on, Ja. All right, like we do at the end of every show, because we're approaching the five-minute mark, we got to give them a quiz. Yes, Zink? I, I can open the quiz if you'd like. Yes, please. So let me set the stage. So the thing is, intern Ja Rule goes to Cal State Northridge, who UC Riverside's playing in baseball and softball this weekend. Uh, he's flying the Matador colors, and at the end of every show, we give him a quiz to see what he's learned. It could be about local sports, then we kind of ask him what he actually learned about this broadcasting show. Um, so, Ja, first off, any update on the NFL draft? No. No? For our local guys? No? None. Okay. All right. So, that's a good thing. Okay. So, we're going to ask you a couple questions. If you go three for three. Dinner. We get you a gift card. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. dinner. That's, that's how easy. That's how it works. So. But wait, he is 0 for 2 at this point, correct? We've done it two we've weeks. We've done it two weeks in a row, and I think he's failed both times. That will change today. You got a good feeling, Gazal? Okay, I'm, I'm You're just... I mean, Gazal's his lifeline. So Gazal's <laughs> not going to give him the answer, but he's going to kind of prompt him, give him some hints to help him out. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, All right, Zink, you go first. What former Arlington player is now a member of the New York Mets? You ever heard Camp Town Races, the song? Nope. Oh, wow. That was going to be my pick. That was going to be my pick. You know what? You've already, th there was the lifeline right there. Is that a good hit? It oh, was, man. if you know anything, yes. Beats me. Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. He has his first name is the same as the last name of a famous science fiction film director. Oh, my gosh. Jeff Town <laughs> Races. He made Star Wars. I'm clueless right now. Okay, like, who's the talking about? This do you know, okay, do you know who who's the guy who made Star Wars? No. Oh, wow. Oh, oh. This is foreign language to me. Guys. Okay, okay. Hang on, hang on. Okay. Wow. Um, <laughs> this could go on all day. <laughs> hey, cue up the I Star Wars. Up. White flag, white flag. Right? Okay. Lucas Duda. I would never get John, that. that's my team. The Mets. He actually plays baseball now, and he's relevant. He mashes. He's I, good. I'm not the biggest baseball fan. Right? Okay, so there you go. I, I thought I gave him his uh, That's He's saying... Well. I was giving him old questions. That's like a guy who's playing now. I wasn't saying old questions. Here, I'm going to run through my questions even though this, this, so, so, this, this reminds me of This reminds me of, real quick, I don't know we're late out of time. So in New York growing up, uh, Mike Francesa and Chris Mad Dog Russo used to do a Super Bowl quiz, and the prize was a trip to the Super Bowl. So what he'd do is the first question would always be what he called a cookie. He'd say, what kind of fan are you? Like, Pip, what kind of fan are you? What hat is on your head? Right, right. <laughs> so why don't you give him a, a, a like, why don't you give him a Packer question, then we'll go oh, from there. Man. Oh, my God. Okay. A Green Bay Packer question? Uh, can I give him Yeah, one? go for it. Okay, so so Kenny Clark was drafted by the Green Bay Packers. What high school do you go to? Carter. That's the cookie. Okay. That's the it, cookie. It now. couldn't get any easier than that. <laughs> okay. Oh, I could write it out for him if he'd like. <laughs> Josh, so we, we were just talking about the Ken Hubs Award, right? Like yes. Minutes ago. Yes. Ken Hubs Award coming up on May 9th. Uh, what high school did Ken Hubs go to? I mentioned it. You mentioned that? Yeah, I did. Yeah. I was not paying attention. No, I was, I, I was I, paying attention to the. Uh, I, I did the mention track. it. Josh, ja, think real hard and regulate. <laughs> what? Uh, Southside baby. I'm, I'm sure Greg might know where Ken Hubs went to high school. Oh, Colton. Oh <laughs> my <laughs> God! <laughs> you know what? This this is a sham. <laughs> well, he's two of three, so he's, you're not you're not paying for dinner. He's I'm sounding time. like Trump right now. Come on, <laughs> you're giving him the election. <laughs> Make so inland sports great again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, one final question. We're running out of time. Here's the, here's the last one. This might be a little tougher as we as we kind of take a walk down memory lane. Alma maters. Troy Percival is the head coach at what college, Shaw? This isn't the question, wait. Who? I'm Troy. out. I'm leaving. <laughs> Troy Percival Troy is the head Percival. coach at UC Riverside. Okay. That's not even the question. I haven't even got to the question yet. <laughs> what high school did he coach at before UCR? Um. <laughs> Are you a Spike Lee fan? Who? <laughs> oh. Yeah, I know who Spike Lee is, but I'm right, what was the first? What was the first movie he did with uh, Denzel Washington? Oh, I supposed to know this. John, think Trump. about it while I thank our fine, oh fine sponsors who are probably you, not white happy flag, at this point. White flag. Adrenaline that Athletic Training in Corona. AdrenalineAthletic.com is the website. They've got uh, travel ball teams, training programs, boot camps, 
they can hook it up. Spoiled, quick quality oil change right here in Riverside. Bill Navagato, you're the man. He supports so much in local sports, including the Inland Sports Show. He's local. He's the best. Just like us, we love Bill Navagato. And Remax Advantage, nobody sells more real estate. 909-307-5665. Give them a call. List your home. Find your dream home. Loans, they do it all. Remax Advantage. So, John, uh, any update over there uh, on your pick? Well, I'm busy trying to answer these questions. These difficult questions, oh, Bab. Moreno Valley I, High School is where Troy I was, Percival... I was, I was about is to that say, what you I, were going to say? I was going to say Moreno Valley High School, but... All right. Study up. We're going to do it again next week. UCR, Cal State Northridge on GoHighlanders.com. Tonight, 550 pregame show with the voice of the Highlanders. Gazal Hassan. we got to get out of here. It's the Inland Sports Show. Fox Sports Radio, 1350 AM.